Hey guys, this is John. I'm playing I Am Magnon in the three minute pool on ICC. Gonna be a quick session today. Let's go for a main line D4 opening, inviting the Nimzo. Popular line. I'll play Queen C2. Magnon from the US. Okay, I'll repeat this Knight F3 line. Even though C5, I think, is quite a good response, as I've mentioned before. Okay, let's go for the Fiend Keto. Not bothering this bishop yet on b4. He plays h6, just stopping any knight g5 stuff. And now takes, okay. This is a utterly standard position for this line. I'm going to Fiend Keto. Later I might play bishop h3 in order to play knight d2 without trading the light square bishops. It's one thing you like to do in this line, so let's actually do it immediately. Move this away. And I'm going to go here. He might play knight e4 just to try to slow me down. I'm happy, though. More space, two bishops. White has a slight edge. Very typical, though. Black is solid in this line. Okay, knight e4. Yeah, I should probably take... I can play d5. He'll answer with e5, however. f3 would be normal, I think. Let's actually just centralize first. I'm kind of curious how he's going to play this. He plays d5. Okay. Hmm. So now I'm definitely thinking f3 followed by e4. Now let's play f3 for sure. Yeah, and I think e4 just makes a ton of sense. He might reinforce d5. Yeah. Now here I can try to win a pawn. I'm thinking like trade a bunch of stuff, take on e8 at the end, queen c6, although e3 is kind of weak. Eh, maybe that doesn't work so well. Hmm. I'd like to take and then infiltrate. But nothing I'm looking at really does the trick. Well, let's take once. I think he'll take with the e-pawn. He does. Let's take again. Keep the tension between the rooks. So when he takes on d5, I'm thinking queen c6, knight f6, and then maybe take on e8. Okay, he's going to take there right away. All right, so let's respond this way. So queen c6 probably enables me to take the c-file at the very least. So yeah, let's dive in. Knight f6 and then maybe bishop a3, let's say. Crank up the tension. Bishop e7 is on deck. Yeah, this bishop's not doing anything, so... My bishop slashing through both sides of the board should give me something here. Looks a little difficult to play black's position. Debatable if bishop e7 is a threat, because he can answer that with queen e8, and I've got this pin situation, so I might want to play a preparatory move like king f2 prior to playing bishop e7, just defend my rook. Moves the knight away. Okay, so now, wow, his queen is nearly trapped. I'm definitely going to start with this move. Let's go to b8 or e8. It's almost like a tactics puzzle now. Bishop d6, back to d8, bishop c7, 2 f8. Not seeing anything decisive there. I think I'll just take this pawn. It's a position where I could try to find some win, but I'm not seeing it. And here he can't bring his knight out without running into problems, so this looks pretty good. Hmm, let's go here. Come in with the queen again. Just got to watch that time. Maybe queen a7. I think I might just start moving my d-pawn up the board. That actually looks quite strong. Let's just play that way. I have less time now, got to make something happen, so. Can maybe queen a7? He's going to go this way, okay. My bishop still controls c8. And now he has trouble just dealing with rook e8. Probably has to play that, yep. Okay, let's keep an eye here. Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, 
Let's go here. He's going to lose a bunch of stuff. But he's not losing immediately. He's going to check and then go after my A pawn. But I'll win this guy. And now we'll start advancing. The majority. Get the king up to g5. Make it smart. Okay, now let's go here. Let's give a check. Check again. Go king e4. Okay, I'm kind of messing around a bit. Uh, he tried the pre-move trick. <laughs> yeah, I can't blame him with that amount of time. I wasn't making any pro making any progress the last ten moves or so, but so to win this end game three versus one, I'd like to get into a situation where I have two connected pass pawns. So I, I wasn't playing h5 because if I trade, let's say my g pawn for uh, my h pawn for his g pawn, then you could get into a rook and f and h pawn versus rook situation, which are drawish. I mean, with no increment, this is largely a moot point, but I was trying to avoid that. So probably the easiest way to win, now that I look at it and have some time to contemplate, is actually just, like, say, right here, just play rook b5 followed by h5. And trade the h-pawn for the g-pawn, but be able to take back with the rook, importantly. So if I illustrate that towards the end of the game. So let me go forward. Yeah, like somewhere somewhere right around here, just play this, followed by h5. You know, black can, all black can really do is wait. And this will be a win, with the f and the g-pawns connected. Okay, so we win that first game. I'm going to jump right back into the pool, because I don't have a ton of time. The position to open up in my favor. And you can see the two bishops and the effect they have. I like deactivating this bishop on a3. Now this is a situation after I won the d-pawn that I really need to work on, and I think I did an okay job of it during this game, but converting winning positions without spending too much time. That's one thing that's done me in in the past, because I'll often sit there like trying to find the most clinical way to end the game, and I lose on time as a result. So like this position, even right here after queen b8, it felt like I was missing some sort of tactic maybe to outright win a a rook or black's queen or something, but I think black always has a square to go to. Bishop d6, queen d8, bishop d7, mm, followed by bishop e7. Yeah, so there's a line where I can win the exchange, according to the computer. But I didn't see that during the game, so I think just picking up the pawn is, is easiest. And eh, queen c6, maybe not the best, but I saw a straightforward plan, just advancing the d-pawn. So I went for it. What about, what about this position? Here I should just pick up the b6 pawn according to the computer. I'd love to play rook e8, but it's not working. I didn't think a check on e6 did anything. Black can just hide on the h file. Yeah, but queen takes b6 does look quite strong. It even rules out queen c5. But this too is winning. Really doubtful black can survive down the two pawns in the rook endgame. All right, so I'm waiting for the next game. Pool's kind of dead right now. Probably not a good time to play. It's like 5.45 US Central time. Oh, by the way, I will play Title Tuesday this Tuesday. I made some time in my schedule, so I'll put out an announcement video on that shortly. That's this Tuesday, August 1st. Still waiting for a game. Anything else to be said about this one? If I knew I could get a position like I got in the middle game from this opening, like every single time, I would play this line a lot more. Because I think that setup with white having the two bishops, advancing e4, objectively it's tough for black to defend there. If white just plays this kind of slow, solid style. Okay, uh, let's go for g6. Let's see if he takes on f6. He might. He doesn't. Sideburns. Might try to stuff d4 in. d4, you can take right away. Knight d5. Let's play a6 first. 
just rule out any bishop coming there. I'm going to go here now. Okay, now d4 looks like the way to play. And then knight d5. This is a good device against the bishop on b2 if you can achieve it. a3. Hmm. So if I take here, he takes on g7. I take d2. Does that just win a pawn for me? Kind of looks like it. Take. If he takes the pawn, I take, take, take on e3. I think it's good. I'm going to do it. Can also play knight takes f4 here. Because I've got knight e2 as an in-between threat. But then queen b2. Yeah, that's probably not good. So let's just stick with the original plan. Oh, I did not even see that move. <laughs> did not see queen b2 at all. Mm. Now do I play something crazy with knight takes f4? Oh, that's a bummer. All right, well, let's just do this first. I'll try to get a couple pawns for this. Now he's threatening mate. I think I have to essentially play f6. That was just a pure oversight on my part. Bad news. Okay, maybe I can go after his light square bishop. That's at least a defender of his king. So maybe I take on g2, play b5, bishop b7. Yeah, let's do that. Now it's all about being going to be creating confusion as much as possible to try to get back in this game. Make the position as messy as I can. Uh... Bishop b7, any knight discoveries that are going to hurt me? Hmm. Well, even if there are, I think I have to just do this. Knight e4, knight d4, maybe? Oh, that's complete junk. <laughs> queen b6, I'm just worried he's going to take on f6, but I guess I can trade trade and queen to c7 there. Can I hold that? I don't know, but I'm going to try. At least make him think about it. Rook d7 looks strong here. This doesn't move like g5. Okay. Knight d4 he can just take. Uh, okay, at least I have f5 stuff at the very end of this line. Yeah, there's some calculation required by white. I thought I was getting all fancy with those in-between moves. Guess not. So I'm really banking on this pin. He can probably just sidestep with his king. But I can play rook d8 then, maybe. Always watching out for knight takes f6. f5. Forceful. Okay, let's do this. Maybe g5 was also an option to keep his bishop out, but he can always play h4 to try to get it back in the game. Okay, now I do like g5. I'm going to play it. If h4, maybe check, and then queen f4. Yeah, and actually, he's quickly running into issues with his knight there. And this how his queen is out of the game all of a sudden. If he moves the knight, queen f3. It's going to mate him. So maybe he'll sack here, but even that, I mean, he'll have to reckon with queen f3 soon. Okay, protects his king. Hmm. Probably this. Can take on e7. But I don't think there's checkmate. No. And I'm, bishop takes g4 is a huge threat. So then I'm getting into f3 or f2 with check next move. 
Yeah, and he has no time left. He just resigned. All right. Big miscalculation on my part. Bishop takes g7, take on d2. I completely miss queen b2. I think I missed this because, you know, sometimes when you're calculating and a piece can't go to a certain square initially in the position that you're calculating from, you may miss it later in the combination. So the fact that the b2, was b2 square was freed up after the capture on g7 was a blind spot to me. And also there was this inherent desire to try to punish the way white was playing. White's opening strategy looks dubious to me. Queen to c1, all these pawn moves. He's playing in the style of a Dutch defense, but not even a very good Dutch defense. So I felt like I deserved to punish white here, which is always dangerous thinking in chess. The computer does say I'm a lot better. It says f5. That was not a candidate move for me. f5. Hmm. So try to force a clash with the g4 pawn and take with the bishop is what it wants to do. Okay, here I should have played knight takes f4. How does that work? Let's look at that position real quick. So here, take, bishop takes g7. Mm, now it says e2. Okay, if knight takes f4, I thought white could just step here once again. Okay, I get this check in, king h1. Oh, that allows knight g3. If king h2, is there queen c7? Maybe. What happens on king h2? Just f6, wow. And if takes, probably now check with the queen. Uh-huh, and I have a perpetual... Like so. Yeah, it's hard to see. Hmm. So this may hold up tactically for black in the sense that I'm not worse. Yeah, after I take on d2, I am worse, though. And now he's plus 3, although I think I managed to mix up the position nicely. Trading his light square bishop was key, because you can see the only thing I was banking on later was that pressure on the h1, a8 diagonal. It felt like he should have a tactical win somewhere. B4, uh-huh. That's a strong move because this knight can make its way into C5 once he gets that square under control. This is what you got to do in a bad position. Just make it messy, make it complicated, keep resisting. Ask yourself, if I were my opponent in this winning position, what would be the most unpleasant move to face? Like, what would I not want to see in converting my advantage? That's very often how I think in these positions. Yeah, and after I get this check-in... Followed by the queen coming in. Also, bishop takes e4 is good, but queen here looks good too. Yep, bishop f3 was correct, after which I'm winning. Main threat being bishop takes g4 and then queen f3 or queen f2, depending upon where the king goes. I think if he takes on e7... Uh, well, I was going to take with the bishop. Ah, but there is forced checkmate. Yeah, because I can win g3 with check like that. Okay, yeah, it's going to be mate soon. Let's get back in there. On an OTB tournament related note, I'm finalizing some of the events that I'm going to be playing. So the two tournaments, well actually three tournaments that I'm definitely committed to are all happening in this next month. So I'll be playing in the Twin Ports Open here in Minnesota, which is just a five round tournament. Is this Greg Shahadi, by the way? Chess stud, I think it is. <laughs> yeah, I think this is Greg Shahadi. If he plays the Nimzo, it's definitely Greg. Yep. <laughs> All right, well, this will be fun. This is not his main account. But I think this account is public still, so yeah, we'll see what happens. I'll just play a3 this time around. Play the main line. Serious bragging rights up for grab in this game. Okay, I'll try this line with the knight coming to e2. We'll see what happens. And now queen here. Just step back. Rook d1, knight c3 is the plan. Greg jumping in the pool. I think I want to play knight c3 anyways here, so let's do it. Take with the rook usually. Probably rook c8. Yeah. Now here do I play f3 or not? I can never remember. Or is it queen d1? Queen d1 might be a move too. Let's do queen d1. Looks kind of weird, but... I think it's fine. And now f3? Okay. So f3 play just to get bishop e2 in and castle. Because we are behind in development. That's one concession you make in getting the bishop bear in this line. So 
Just getting ready to cackle. Cackle kingside. Okay, b3. Really wants c4. He really, really wants that move. Or that square. Let's play b3. I think I kind of have to. Hmm. Can take on f6, but I don't like that. I think I have to castle and just see what happens. Yeah, he might win a pawn now, unfortunately. All right, let's take. Yeah, definitely not liking my position. I think I got to take here. I'll take on d2 first. Yeah, now he takes there. All right, I'm going to take this guy, even though I'm not thrilled. <laughs> not thrilled at all. What knight b5? I'm trying to go after a7, also knight d6. Probably a couple of good replies possible for him. Queen e7 makes sense. He wants his rook on a stable square, yeah. Hmm, queen in. Thinking about queen in. I can take on a7, but he's going to go rook a5 if I do that. So I think I should do this. But now my knight is somewhat neutralized, unfortunately. Let's go over here. I'm hoping he goes e5 so I can play knight f5, but I doubt he does that. Might just go for queen c3 and look to swap some stuff. Yeah, let's take. I want knight b5. Kind of sketchy, and he's got a lot of pawns on that side of the board, but that's what I'm looking at. Okay, let's take this. Try to create some sort of mating net. Also, rook here is an idea. Hmm. I'm trying to mate him somehow. It's tough, though. Gotta look for maximum confusion. Hmm. Uh oh. Now his pawn is coming. not working too hot. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> I lost. Well played, Greg. He got me out of the opening. Yeah, this maneuver of the knight to a5 was pretty good as it turned out. I'm trying to think maybe I should have played bishop takes f6 in this position. I think that was better than playing the rook back to d2. Yeah, rook back to d2 
After knight a5 looks difficult. I'm underdeveloped. If I can't play b3 safely, I think my position is just worse. But bishop takes f6 on the other hand. If he takes with the queen, I can take on d6. Black might even have compensation there, I'm not sure, but... Oh, he says, he says oops was on my wrong account. <laughs> Here, let's just check this moment. The engine says rook d2 is all right, but then again, it's not giving anything for white. Yeah, it's just too good for black after d5. Let's see if he gets back in the pool. I'm going to enter again. This is the plan for white in this line, so you can bring the knight to e2, play your queen back to c c2, rook d1, knight c3. That said, though, having played this, I'm not sure that this leads to an advantage for white. I'm actually pretty skeptical of that. Aha, uh -huh, he was not recording, he said. No dual commentary today, guys. Sorry. Yeah, what about bishop takes f6? Let me look at that moment, because now the engine is saying bishop takes f6 was better. Oh, okay. I'm playing Magnon again. I'm going to play one or two more games before I wrap up. Okay, Sicilian. Rouser. Been playing quite a bit of this line recently. And f3, f3 immediately, okay. Huh. Before queen d2 even. Well, all right, let's play a6. Mm-hmm. And if he castles, now we'll be back in something I'm more familiar with. h4. Okay, I'm still going to play h6. Let's go b5. Hmm. He's delaying queenside castling a lot. Okay, queen c7. This is the best post for the queen. Bring the bishop out. Yeah, so having played h6, you got to be more careful about white getting g5 in with tempo. I don't think this is bad for black. But uh, yeah, black needs to exercise some caution. Okay, b4, knight e2, d5 comes to mind. As does just knight d7. b4, knight e2, d5, knight d4, take. Eh, he'll probably have pretty good play when the position opens up there, but actually, nah, let's try it. Give this a shot. He can play e5 here, because I can't take with the queen due to bishop f4. So that may be the best approach for white. e5, knight d7. Yeah, he's going to try this line. At least he can't play f4, because I have d4 with the attack on the rook on h1. There's bishop there, all right. So if I take, what is happening? I'm going to capture. See if I can call his bluff, if it is a bluff. Queen f4, I have bishop d6. And I'm on f3, I'm also threatening to come into c4. Mm-hmm, f4. Well, this seems like a no-brainer. I could take on g4, but I didn't like bishop takes g7. Hmm. I'm going to castle, despite how dangerous this looks, and try to keep the position as closed as possible. On the king side, that is. Okay, now e5, maybe? Uh, let's play g6 instead. I think I, oh, bishop takes e6. Just ran right into it. Just saw it right after I played it. Sloppy, John. Very sloppy. I hate that situation in chess. Like, you see the refutation right after you play your move. All right, let's go here. Not so subtle threat of knight a3. He's going to play queen f3 probably.
And then maybe bishop c5 after that. I'd also love to get in knight a3 somewhere. But first, I think I need to shake that bishop. I'm sacking a pawn here, by the way. Rook c8, maybe? Rook c8 is interesting. Let's do it, because if he takes, even though my rook is in the line of fire, his queen is under attack. This might be bad, but it's really hard to say. Take c5, okay. Yeah, he's doing the safe route. You know what? Let's do this. I'm going to try it. There's not even an immediate threat, but I think White's king being so open is a cause for concern. Especially given the time situation. Let's go here. Huh. Okay, now I'm threatening check. Let's go back. Can take, take, and play 96. Let's go here. Trying to defend my king. Okay, I'm going after a2 now. He has less time than I do, even. Rook b1 coming. Okay, I went on time. Hmm. Messy end game, messy game. Knight a3 is a typical blitz decision. It's unsound, probably, but his king was on the chopping block a bit more than mine. So I had the initiative, and the in initiative matters a whole lot in blitz. I think this game was going pretty well, maybe up through about here. I'm not sure I should castle in this position. And also, maybe after f4, I should play... Knight f3 even. I don't know why I didn't consider knight f3. I was only looking at knight c4 and knight takes g4. But I am wondering what the best move is. Computer says knight c4 is okay. And now I should play bishop b5, setting up knight a3. Bishop b5 followed by rook c8. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then white has to worry about c2. Yeah. This method of defense, like playing h5... In theory, it's good trying to keep the position closed on the king's side, but he's only down a pawn, and his pieces occupy pretty good squares. Yeah, and this was just a blunder. Bishop takes e6. I can't take the bishop because a queen takes. Checkmate. And let's just check the evaluation of knight a3 real quick. Yeah, knight a3, totally bad, but white had to defend his king after this. Yeah, pretty sure I was losing up through the end virtually. Some chances when I take on a2. Okay, last game. I also wanted to check the opening. I am in the pool right now, but let's see the opening real quick. b4 followed by d5. Yeah, because if on e5... Knight d7, and I can just pick off the pawn next. I like my position. And again, he can't play f4 here because of d4. Important motif, bishop hitting h1. So d5 looks pretty good, in fact. And maybe he should play, like what the computer's suggesting, knight d4. That crossed my mind that he might just let me take on e4, try to win my light square bishop, play for compensation in the resulting open position. Black has a wide choice here. And even before I play b4, I don't necessarily have to do that either. I could play knight d7, it's interesting. Uh, rook move, like rook c8 or rook b8, also helpful. I'm really liking these rouser positions. They lead to rich, interesting play. 
What about here after g5? Again, bishop b5 immediately is best. Hmm. Bishop b5, queen g3, rook c8. Computer consistently suggesting that, because at that point, knight a3 does become a threat. It's a good point. With white's knight unable to come to d4, that motif is just on the cards at all times. Yeah, he has to play something awkward there. If you visualize the line, bishop b5, queen g3, rook a c8. The engine is saying queen e1. So after knight a3, followed by queen takes c2, at least the rook is defended. But yeah, that's an extreme measure. Okay, 80s, the last opponent for the day. I'm going to play the exchange, Slav. Which, contrary to popular popular belief, is not necessarily a drawing weapon. White can play this for an advantage, as I found out from the black side many times. <laughs> queen b6, queen b6 that early. Uh, all right, I'm going to go here. If he takes, he's not going to take. Okay, now I think I might want to play a3. Yeah, but a3 he can take at that point. Mm, hate to spend time here, but I'm just not not so familiar with this line. E3. Okay, I'm going to play E3. If he takes, I'll play Rook C1. Oftentimes they play Queen B6 as a bluff and don't end up taking on B2. I know, because I've done this before myself. <laughs> but just in case he does, I should have some ideas in mind. Probably Bishop E5 check and Knight GE2. He is going to do it, okay. Yeah, so let's play this way. i got to speed up my development, so check, knight ge2 on the way, and then castle. Try to demonstrate that he's underdeveloped. Because now he's going to have to spend some tempi with the queen, like extracting it. Queen b4, queen a3. Okay. Bishop about 5 is a little surprising. So now I have queen a4. And he has to play rook c8. I can take on a7. Now he takes on b5 then. Ah, still though, I think this has to be the most critical move. Maybe on rook c8 I just take and then take on a7. I'm still ahead in development there. e5. Wow. No way that's good. Yeah, he just resigned right away. I can take, and then he'll lose the rook in the corner. Yeesh. Yeah, he's got to play rook c8 at this point. And then the engine says, play a3. Rook c8, a3. It's subtle. Threatening rook a2 business? Okay, I got to make a mental note to look this queen b6 line up. Shouldn't be good, but just one of those things that if you haven't studied the opening so much, I played this exchange slot line a couple times. Only once OTB. But I need to look this one up for sure. Okay, that game was short, so let's play one last game. The engine consistently likes that A3 move. Even right here where I played Queen A4, it prefers A3. Yeah, because of the threat of Rook A2. In fact, let's see that. So right here, a3. He is controlling c2, so he can always play a piece there, but maybe I just sidestep with queen e1. Yeah, something like this. And then he has b3 available if I do play rook a2, but still, the squares are rapidly running out for that queen. Maybe rook a2, queen b3, knight c1 is the threat now? Yeah, that's probably the threat. So if he plays like something neutral, yeah, we get that in. Queen's finally trapped. So here he'd have to play knight e4, according to the engine. Ah, bishop a4. Hit the queen from a different direction. If queen here, now rook b1. Notice that the bishop is blocked. And I bet if this just take here is crushing. 
Okay, so a3. Mm -hmm. And what about right after he plays queen b6? This is a case where an openings database would probably be more useful than just the cursory analysis from the engine, but yeah, knight c3 makes sense. If he takes here, I can at the very least take on d5, I think. Although even that might be kind of weird if he plays e5. This might be rubbish, but let's see. Idea being uh, bishop takes e5, bishop b4, check. Okay, Mac 3 is the last opponent going for another Sicilian. Hmm. I'm going to play my Blitz line. This B6 variation, a favorite of Tony Miles. And since I'm playing against uh, a, a British player, it seems fitting. Okay, F3. Mm hmm. Interesting way of handling this. I'm just going to go for a Fianchetto of the other bishop. He's being very solid with his pawns in the center. Okay. Now let's play d6. So he's got this nice center, but the position looks normal, I would say. Let's go knight c6. If ever d5, I can play knight e5. He's going for b4. Okay, let's do this. Hmm. Maybe now I can try to get him to close the center. d5, knight e7. And then move this knight and play for f5 like in a king's Indian. Let's go with that plan. Hmm. Knight d7, he has knight c4. It's a bit irritating. Let's do this one. If g4, I'm going to play knight f4. Okay, and here we go. F5. Counterplay. Attempt to checkmate him, just like you would in a King's Indian. So yeah, let's go F4. Just looking at some way if I can seal the queen side real quick. It's hard to do, though. Maybe I take here. Take and play like queen... Eh, queen D7 doesn't look so good. Hmm. And I'm just going to continue with this. He's going to play a5 is the thing. White's play is pretty easy. Oh, actually, takes there. Interesting. That I wasn't expecting. The bad thing is my bishop is on b7 as opposed to c8 as it normally would be in a king's Indian. So, yeah, I may have issues like executing this attack. We'll find out. Hmm. I'm going to go here, just maybe even to consider putting the bishop on c8. Probably have to play this way. King's Indian players know, like, without the light square bishop, it's hard to get the attack off the ground. So, yeah, let's do this. Could play rook b8 now. Would probably be a good move. He does. All right, let's bring this guy over. Yeah, he wants that knight in on c6, which does look quite strong. Okay, let's do this. So knight c6, I'm going to play queen c7. And I this rook. I expect queen b3. But maybe then I can finally play g4. Yeah, I think I got to go for it. Just so long as he can't invade and especially trade queens. Wow, he's going to take that way. That is interesting. That seems kind of extreme to me, but it makes some sense. Oh, but he dropped this guy. Yeah, wow. So he self-destructed at the end, but he might have been getting nervous about my, my attack against this king. I think in this position, I'm starting to coordinate well. With my bishop on b7 to begin this attack, I'm skeptical, but now I get a position where it looks like my, my pieces are operating as they should. 
let's just see the analysis of this particular position. Okay, the computer thinks white's still a lot better. Rook a8, it suggests, just going after a7. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know why rook a8 is good other than attacking a7? It also prepares queen b8. A queen trade would be awesome for white. Because white's just going to win on the queen side if I don't checkmate on the king side or win material or something. So if white's able to bring about a trade or win a key pawn like on a7, especially attacking my queen, my attack can just die off real quick. Yeah, b6, I don't recommend this move, especially in a tournament game. It's just too risky allowing white to play d4, the entire goal of the c3 Sicilian. Knight f6 or d5 on move 2 are definitely better, but I do play it from time to time because there's some traps in this line, which I've gone into in other videos. Just taking a quick peek here. Computer thinks I should trade some pawns, but I was bent on just closing up the king side and attacking. Yeah, these moves are reasonable. I think rook c7, bishop c8 is an important reorganization. Even if white is better in the final position, this at least gives me a chance. And white just got too nervous, started eliminating pieces. Let's tabulate the results. We just had that one loss to Greg. So one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, five wins, one loss. Gained some rating points. Not a bad session. Came back in that game against Sideburns. Second game against Magnon was totally unclear. Topsy-turvy game. So, yeah, I know I'm playing a lot of Blitz these, these days, and um, I apologize if you're not liking the variety on my channel as of late, but as I've said, I'm, I'm trying to prepare for some tournaments. I'm really trying to test myself, so the typical variety of videos that I tend to do has been put on hold for just a little bit. I want more practice against strong opposition and I'm finding that right now in the, the three minute pool. Even though these games are real quick, I'm just trying to get more experience, getting used to playing against tough opponents pretty much every game and feeling some element of time pressure at all times. So anyways, I hope most of you guys still like these videos and I hope you have a good rest of your weekend or week if you're watching this on a Monday and I will talk to you guys again soon. All right, bye.